वेलकम व्यूअर्स टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस द एनाटॉमी ऑफ फीमेल ब्रेस्ट द फीमेल ब्रेस्ट इन ह्यूमन कंटेंट्स मेमोरी ग्लांड्स दैट प्रोड्यूस मिल्क फॉर नर्सिंग देयर यंग इन दिस व्यू यू कैन सी द कट ओपन सेक्शन ऑफ द राइट फीमेल ब्रेस्ट एट द फ्रंट ऑफ द चेस्ट द ब्रेस्ट टिश्यू कैन एक्सटेंड फ्रॉम द क्लाइविकल or the collar bone to the middle of the sternum or the breast bone at the sides of the chest the breast tissue can extend into the axilla and can reach as far as to the back as the latissimus dorsi muscle in most women one breast is slightly larger than the other more obvious and persistent asymmetry in the breast size occurs in up to 25% of women now you are able to see the nipple the nipple is surrounded by a pigmented circular region of skin called the areola which becomes even more pigmented and prominent during puberty the areola shows small punctual elevations on its surface which are produced by many areolar glands these are mostly sweat and sebaceous glands as well as modified mammary glands called areolar glands of montgomery their function is to produce an antimicrobial secretion that protects the surface of areola in this view you can see the subcutaneous fat as a flap like tissue the subcutaneous fat is expanded in the breast tissue to form a major fraction of its interlobular tissue about which i will discuss in detail later on in this video the base of each breast is attached to the chest by the deep fossa over the pectoralis major the space between the breast and pectoralis major muscle is called retro mammary space deeper to the subcutaneous tissue is the pectoralis major muscle as you see now there are fascial tissues separating the two the fascia covering the superficial surface of pectoralis major muscle is called the deep fascia of breast in relation to its location as you can see also there is one more fascia superficial to the fascia covering the superficial surface of pectoralis major muscle this is the superficial fascia of the breast i will discuss more about this fascia later on in this video now deeper down you can see the cut section of the belly of the pectoralis major muscle deeper to it the chest wall composed of ribs and intercostal muscles are seen as you see here the female breast extend on average from the level of second rib to the level of sixth rib in front of the rib cage thus the breasts cover most of the chest area and the chest walls now i am focusing the posterior aspect of anterolateral chest wall related to the breast here you see the concerned ribs with their respective intercostal spaces labeled in detail this is the superior view of the cross section of chest wall with first intercostal muscle pectoralis major muscle its fascia called the deep fascia of breast the superficial fascia of the breast the fatty tissue layer and lastly skin 
from deep to superficial aspect respectively. Now you can see the lateral view of the chest wall showing the similar structures except the breast which will be focused later on as a cut section. In this front view, you can see the structures revealed after removing the outer half of the right breast deep up to the level of pectoralis major fossa. You can now see the pectoralis minor muscle which lies deeper to pectoralis major muscle. Now I will discuss about the fascias of the breast. As you see here, the fascias covering the superficial surface of pectoralis major muscle labeled as the deep fascia of breast. Also you can see the superficial fascia which on bifurcation forms the fascial planes of the breast. The anterior lamella of this superficial fascia is seen here following the contour and skin of the breast while the posterior lamellae extends inferiorly along the deeper extent of the breast covering the pectoralis fascia. Here you see the anterior lamellae enclosing the breast tissue till nipple as a 3D cone with its base formed by the posterior lamellae. This superficial fascia is separated from the skin by 0.5 to 2.5 cm of subcutaneous fat. Although not shown in this model, at this point it is important to mention about Cooper's ligament. These ligaments are fibrous tissue prolongations that radiate from the deeper fascia to the superficial fascial envelope supporting and suspending the tissues and maintaining the shape of the breasts. Here you can see both the fascial lamellae of the breast nicely revealed to clear your concept of the fascial planes. The fascias continue inferiorly as scarpas and campas fascia. The histology of breast will be discussed now. Female breasts contain different populations of fatty, fibrous and granular tissue in the form of mammary glands and surrounding connective tissue. The surrounding connective tissue is fibrous and fatty which fills in the spaces between glands and largely determines the breast size. Some women have a higher proportion of glandular tissue than of adipose or connective tissue. The fat to connective tissue ratio determines the density or firmness of the breast. The connective tissue of the breast is present at two locations, intralobular and interlobular stroma. The interlobular stroma is seen here which appears more fatty as appreciated by the yellow color. In this view you can see both the types of stroma. The interlobular stroma separates one lobule from the other and is composed mainly of adipose tissue and some loose connective tissue. The intralobular stroma encloses each lobule and its acini and ducts and is chiefly made of loose connective tissue. The interlobular tissue around the glands is more fatty and around the duct it's more fibrous. You can appreciate the more fibrous nature of the interlobular stroma now. Here you can appreciate the feature that Superficial fascia is separated from the skin by 0.5 to 2.5 cm of subcutaneous fat. 
Now focusing on the glandular component of the breast, the glandular tissue includes the lactiferous lobes and ducts which drain out through the nipple. Each breast has 15 to 20 such sections which are separated by fibrous bands about which I have already talked. They are called the suspensory ligament of Cooper. They are arranged like the petals of a daisy. Each of these lobes has many smaller structures called lobules. The lobes, lobules, are all linked by thin tubes called ducts. Now you can see one such lobule with its basic unit called the terminal duct lobular unit. In short, T, D, L, U, which produce the fatty breast milk. They give the breasts its offspring's feeding function as a mammary gland. Also appreciate here how the intralobular and interlobular stroma surround the terminal duct lobular unit. The secretory portion of the TDLU or terminal duct lobular unit is the lobular acinus which drain in terminal duct. That's why the name terminal duct lobular unit. Many terminal duct unite to form segmental duct which further unite to form collecting duct and so on to form lactiferous duct, lactiferous sinus and ultimately draining out of the nipple as 15 to 20 outlets. Each breast also contains blood vessels and vessels that carry lymph. The lymph vessels lead to small bean-shaped organs called lymph nodes. These lymph nodes are found in clusters around the arm, above the collarbone and in the chest. I will speak about the lymphatic drainage of breast in detail in my upcoming video. It is a very important topic if one has to understand the dynamics of spread of breast cancer, the most common cancer in females worldwide. Thank you all. Please do like, subscribe and share my videos.